Bismillahirrahmanirrahim in the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate. All praise be to Allah, peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the prophets from Adam to him, peace be upon them all. We shall concentrate today on the implications of a term that has been used by many Muslim spiritual masters, including Muhammad Jalalatin Rumi. That is Adab. Adab literally means self-control, self-discipline, mannerliness, courtesy, politeness. It's basically in the Western tradition, although it's very narrow, very limited to, to carry the meaning of, of Adab, which is very universal, like a civility. But as I said, it is very narrow. So it is the principles of Islamic ethics, morality. And Islamic spirituality is nothing but adab, as they say. At tasawuf kulluhu adab, kulluhu akhlaq. All Islamic spirituality consists in this, or sums up with this term adab. So Mevlana makes use of this term and dwells on it. And, and tries, tries to emphasize it is importance for every individual believer, human being. So let me share some of his teachings with us on this notion. He begins by saying, Oh my Muslim fellow, you want to learn what is adab, what is good manner? I'll tell you. Good manners are nothing but forbearance, endurance with the person who has no adapt. Meaning to enduring, enduring with the nonsense of a person who has no manners. And let us implore God, Allah, Mevlana continues, to help us succeed in having good manners, adapt. Because one who lacks adept, good manners, is deprived of the grace of Allah. A man with no good manners does not only maltreat himself, mistreat himself, abuse himself, but also sets the whole world on fire. And look, open your eyes. Look up closely the entire word of Allah Almighty in the Quran. Every verse of the Quran, one by one, has come to teach nothing but adab, meaning of morals and self-control. After all, it was Prophet who uh, exclaimed, My Lord has taught me good manners, adab. How beautifully he taught me. Whatever befalls you of gloom or sorrow, Mevlana goes on, is the result of irreverence and lack of adab. Anyone who behaving with irreverence in the path of the beloved Prophet is like a brigand who robs men. He is therefore no longer a man, a human. Through adab, this heaven has been filled with luminosity, light, through discipline, adapt, the angels become immaculate and holy. By reason of adapt, the sun was eclipsed and insolence caused the uh, angel of death to be turned back from the door. So after this, these couplets, let me give you two examples from Mevlana is two different works in order to explain the full meaning and also application of this term in our social life. And these two examples I have selected, uh, he has also other examples, but because of their relevance to our society today in particular. One, one of the examples come from uh, his Fihi Mafi. This concerns the relationship between the rulers or leaders, governors, like Emir or Umara, 
and the scholars, the learned. So, uh, alim or ulama, between the leaders and the high-ranking st st state authorities and the learned people. Mevlana giving this advice to both scholars and rulers by referring to a prophetic hadith. He says the worst of scholars is the one who visits rulers without their summoning, without their call, without their invitation for, in a sense, an expectation from them something. The best and the most fortunate of rulers is the one who visits scholars and seek their opinions, consult them on their issues. Happy is the ruler, Mevlana goes on, who stands at the poor's door, poor man's door. And the wretched, <clears throat> miserable is the poor man who stands at the door of the ruler. Now, what Mevlana Rumi tries to convey to us is, to my humble opinion, is the following. Knowledge precedes all the ranks, man and woman. That's why uh, highest rank in Islamic tradition. And man and woman of knowledge with wisdom and good character are therefore always to be consulted. And upon their guidance, the rest should conduct their affairs. So today, for instance, every country, every state in grippling, in coping with this uh, uh, current outbreak, a Corona-19 disease, has immediately formed a consultative committee consisting of qualified, competent scientists, physicians, health uh, specialists and experts in order to combat and fight with it. Without any interference from outside, they do their research and they often their, uh, uh, offer their recommendations and solutions to the state authorities to, uh, to follow and implement. So this is not only true of medical field, but also for all the crucial areas and affairs. So as far as the scholarship is concerned for Mevlana, scholarship is a virtue in its very essence. Knowledge having a knowledge, being knowledgeable. That virtue is clothed, whether that virtue is clothed in a tunic or an overcoat or in a garment, it makes no difference. What makes you different is what you have in, as, as knowledge. So Mevlana's remarks are very inclusive, not necessarily related to the religious and ethical matters. The other example Mevlana Rumi gives is related to the relationship between t a teacher and a pupil. A student who has just started learning how to write. So Mevlana says the same courteous, polite relationship is supposed to prevail in all our interactions between friends, in family, in a society, even internationally and international platforms. Maybe many of the conflicts can be easily resolved. So a teacher starts, Mevlana says, teaching a child how to write. When the child writes the first whole line, the child runs with excitement and, uh, to show it to his teacher. The teacher notices that it is full of mistakes, but keeps quiet and speaks to the child kindly and gently, encouraging him, saying very softly within the norm of adept courtesy and politeness and mannerliness, oh my dear, that is excellent. You have written well. Bravo, bravo. Only this letter is not quite right. This is how it's supposed to be. This, is, this can be corrected like this. So this letter looks like this. So without hurting the child, the teacher goes through one by one. In the end, child understands. Actually, it's full of errors. But he didn't lose his heart, his hope, his motivation. So, child is on the contrary, very happy to know or to learn his errors. So, so, child's motivation has been done by this uh, teacher who has all the adept, in a sense. And in the end, no doubt, 
both the child and the teacher are happy. Child because of his learning without losing hope and the teacher because of his achievement as a result of his enduring with his student and with his gentle behavior. So, difficult Mevlana says to deal with the ridiculous. With a person who behaves ridiculously, nothing more difficult than enduring the ridiculous. Suppose, for instance, that you have, you know, a, a, a fellow who reads the book and doesn't understand anything which you admire, which you know, uh, read through it because it has carried you a lot of information. So, and yet, this person who has not read the book, maybe he did not understand anything, argues with you about the uh, irrelevance or unimportance, insignificance of the, of the work. So he says, enduring the ridiculous is a great discipline. And enduring people's nonsensical, ridiculous behavior is indeed difficult, but not something unachievable. That's what Mevlana indicates. It requires a saintly, courageous attitude, self-control, self-discipline, meaning adapt. This can be achieved if you work hard on our self-controlling mechanism. If I use this uh, mystical terminology to curb lust and desires of our carnal soul, to overcome the fancies of our ego. Therefore, having adept, behaving with adept, should be our motto, should be our, in fact, uh, principle, should be our uh, criteria in interactions. Now, let me conclude again with saying the prophetic hadith, my Lord has taught me good manners, how beautifully he taught me. And also, in verse from the Quran, in reference to uh, a temptation of the kernel soul. It is in chapter Yusuf 12, verse number 53. I do not free myself from blame. I do not say I am innocent. My human self is inclined to evil, except when my Lord bestows his mercy upon whom he wills. And surely the soul of human being incites to evil, except inasmuch as my Lord has mercy. Truly my Lord is all forgiving, all compassionate. Then let us all lead a life of personal effort and virtue. Beautify our moral character with good manners, self-control, self-discipline to be a man of God, a woman of God, a man of adept, a man of a woman of adept. I would like to conclude with the prayer that I have extracted piece by piece from the teachings of Mevlana Rumi in his exhortations. O oh, my Lord, protect us from any illness which would make us forget your remembrance. Protect us from any illness which would extinguish, put out our love and passion for you. Protect us from any illness which would seize the pleasure we enjoy, we receive when we glorify you. O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, Keep us in good health, prevent us from indulging in evils and wickedness and indecency. O oh, most merciful of merciful ones, accept our prayers in your mercy, with your mercy. May Allah's peace, blessings and love be upon you all.